Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Praetorian. And Jinx here. And welcome back to Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord on the PlayStation 5. So today's episode is going to be the finale video, and I know we haven't covered much, uh, but the reason why is because this game does require a lot of uh, off-camera play if you really want to make any progression in the game. We had to do that with Warband as well. Uh, I'd play off-camera and get us to like interesting moments, you know, into wars or, or when certain things were happening. Uh, so I think that worked best, and so I was going to do that with this one, However, I already kind of started to do that with the other playthrough. I intentionally uh, made that character very similar to this one. Uh, so he has basically the same name. Instead of clan hijinks, though, we're just clan bear. Uh, but it has the same uh, bear, flag, uh, Praetorian's a first name. Uh, he looks similar as well. I try to make him pretty close to the same look. I think my gear is currently different, of course. But as far as our characters look, it's pretty similar. Uh, his skills are very similar to there's a few differences of course obviously i'm much further along in the skills but as far as the skills that i'm focusing on they're very similar and i did all that intentionally so that uh, the plan was that once we got to around this point when i felt like you know it was getting kind of slow showing stuff because we really needed to, to do some grinding uh, that then we would then switch to that character in this series however uh, the views for the series have already declined they've been you know dropping for a little while uh, it's not surprising because you know those first few episodes were kind of rough uh, I think that the views started dropping around four or five it was so four or five and you know I was struggling uh, learning how to play the game uh, the the combat was was difficult at first uh, so you know some people probably wanted to go watch somebody a little bit more experienced knew what they were doing a little bit better you know not just somebody dying over and over again so I get that uh, so I think it makes sense to actually rather than taking that that other playthrough and attaching it onto this one to just start an entirely new series, you know, a new episode one with that character. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, that character, again, is much further along as far as the level goes. Uh, ours in this playthrough is level 10. I believe I'm around level 22 in that playthrough, so over double level, and, and you do go up levels much slower uh, the further you get along. Uh, you know, it takes more experience to get a level. Uh, so a much further level, uh, obviously I've also got a whole bunch of castles and cities under me and villages and stuff. Uh, I think I've explained this earlier in this series that I pretty much rule all this area here. So from like here all the way to the river. Uh, there's one castle, this one right here, that I don't control. I think that's it. I think all the rest of it's mine. Uh, under me, though also under the king, because I am under these guys, the Blondians. Uh, so technically the king granted me all that territory. I've already uh, formed the dragon banner, which is a big part of the, the story content, which we haven't really gotten to dug in, dig into in this series. So it's kind of unfortunate we're skipping all that. Uh, but it does take a while to be able to do that. That's this here, guys. Talking to the ten nobles. Uh, so I'll explain that a bit later in this episode, because I'd like to get some stuff done first. And we'll talk about, kind of fill it in, uh, where we're at in that series. So those of you that are coming right from this series to the other one uh, will already know where I'm at because when we start that series, I probably won't explain it too much. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll talk about that towards the end of the video. There's actually a few things that I wanted to do in this one here, stuff that would be a little bit difficult to show in the other one because uh, you know I'm not able to do it for whatever reason. So one of those is actually buying a production building. Uh, there are limits to how many of these you can have, which you can see in your clan view here. So you'll see workshops. That's the number you can have. Currently, we can only have uh, two. Uh, in my playthrough, I think I can have four, I believe. And, and since I already have all of them, I wouldn't be able to show us buying a workshop in that one until I unlocked a fifth one, if that's even possible, which I think you do get one with every uh, clan rank. That's the main way of getting it. Uh, when you look at your clan rank here, your clan tier, I should say. And so when you hover over that, you can see all the bonuses there. So when your clan tier zero, you only have one workshop. Clan tier one, we can now have two. Uh, so yeah, I did want to show that. And so we're going to do it here. I think this might be their capital. I'm not entirely sure. It looks like a good spot for capital. Yeah, it's right here at the connecting point. I think it might be their capital. I could be wrong. I don't really know a whole lot about these people here, despite the fact that our uh, character in, in both of these playthroughs are of that culture. Uh, Sturgian culture. Uh, one thing Jinx noticed is that they already have a, a blue bear guy. 
So he already has the uh, same banner as we do. It might even be like the same size. I don't know if you can see yeah, her guy. Yeah, like it threw me off when we loaded it up. I was like, are you sure this isn't your save? Yeah, I don't have any, any territory up here. But yeah, you can see it's... I guess my bear is the other way around. I don't know if that matters. He's facing to the right. I don't know. Does he face the other way on the other side? I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. Yeah, I guess if you moved it, yeah. He's your cousin. So yeah, we're relatives, apparently. Uh, it actually isn't the case. It's interesting, but it's not surprising that uh, these Viking slash Russian type people would have a bear symbol. Not surprising at all. Uh, but yeah, it is the Abroving clan. See, I didn't even realize that until Jinx just pointed it out. Uh, so this town here has a few different villages. I think it has two villages that are attached to it, and then two that are attached to a ca uh, castle, which you can access those by holding L1 over the city. And so they're trade-bound villages. So, like, they're att attached to the castle. You know, whoever owns that castle owns those villages, but they trade here at this particular city. And so that means there's four total villages trading here. So we see one's trading fish, one is trading iron, and two is trading hides from their cattle. And so that's what you want to use to determine what kind of production building you want here. Now those are typically already uh, used to, to pick them. So you can see, because of the location having iron, we've got two smithies located in the city. And so you'll, you'll notice when you go into the trade that there is no iron available in the city because they are buying it all up oh wow but they use that to produce weapons and armor uh so that's the two smithies there and then you'll notice they actually have two villages that are producing hides and yet only one tannery and so i think that might be the best thing to get guys is the tannery no competition and they're producing a lot of hides here so you can actually see that the there's a uh, hides to buy here, uh, somewhere right here. So they're not, uh, I don't know if they're particularly cheap here, but mm, that's because they've been buying them. pricey. But that's because they've been buying those hides to then produce the leather, which is worth significantly more. So yeah, they're producing this leather. And leather's a, you can get a decent profit from leather if you know where to take it. And so I think that's what we'll do. Uh, now you can change the building once you buy it. You can change it to whatever you want, uh, but that is one thing to consider is the actual price of the goods here. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and talk to her. I've already checked the price, so we can't afford it. Uh, the price does fluctuate. It's, it seems to be based off of, I'm not entirely sure, but it seems to be based off of like how much they earn. No, I actually want to do this different. Because yeah, you'll find some that are like, in this case, I think this one's 18000 and then there are some that are, you know, much more expensive, you know, like twenty four, twenty five thousand. So I'd assume it's based on like how profitable it is, but yeah, I'm not entirely sure on that. So we want to buy one of her workshops. She has the smithy and the tannery. We want to buy our tannery. It's going to be eighteen thousand eight hundred and four. So these things are not cheap. So we bought it just like that. Just hit yes, and you got it now. Uh, talking to any of these people also allow you to form a caravan. Honestly, the caravans are more profitable than the production buildings but they're a little bit more unpredictable because the caravans can be attacked and uh you know lose everything yeah that makes sense there's a bunch of mountains for like banditos mm -hmm. yeah so it, it is more profitable though as far as like what you're getting per day uh, that's where i felt like i was really starting to excel financially was once i started setting up caravans uh you do need one of your the people in your clan one of your party members uh, you know your companions or, your, or a family or whatever uh, to run that caravan and so then it has to be a named companion Yes, okay. yeah, it has to be a named person and yeah, you can make a lot of money from that uh, But it does cost money to set up a caravan as well But it is a bit cheaper despite the fact that it earns more money typically uh, So it's gonna be 15,000 now you can pay more money to give them a better uh, Like better soldiers a better army because they'll have an army to defend their caravan and so you can pay a bit more a bit more money to make them better protected. Of course, we are broke, so we can't do any of that. We're gonna go and stop talking to her, and then we're gonna go take a look. Uh, right now, we're currently I think this is her house or something, because she's not at either of her working locations. But we're gonna go take a look at at our new tannery. Talk to our workers, all that good stuff. This is what the Sturgeon towns look like. 
Nice. Yeah, I actually like this look. I know it's a little bit more simple, but it's still kind of quite clean. Cabbages. It's not as bad as like the Vlandian ones. Yeah, I don't know. I like I like their towns. It's not too bad. If you could only farm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is it. This is our tannery. So yeah, we could talk to any of the workers here, and you can see that this is on the workplace. But it looks like we only got one worker. Everybody took the day off, apparently. What a nice place. I don't know if it's because the sun's going down. Everybody's gone home. Typically, there's a lot more workers here. He's just there to yeah. kiss your butt. So he says, hey, boss, come to check on the business. And this is what I'm here for. Um, so you can just click on this and say, I'd like to change what you're producing here. And it's going to cost you money, uh, but we're not going to do that. And then we can ask him what he produces here. It's a tannery, treats raw hides with lime and other chemicals and turns them into supple leather. You ask him how workshops work, all that kind of good stuff. Now I believe their profit is based off of the supply and demand in the town. I could be wrong on that, but I've noticed my my towns do make, or excuse me, my workshops do make different profits that, that uh, often fluctuate the prices. And I've, it seems like I make more of a profit, and I could be wrong, maybe you guys more experienced players can correct me on this if I am, uh, but it seems like when I buy all my trade goods, I make more money. Like if I buy, in this case, all of the leather in the town, it seems like it makes more money. <laughs> Similarly, if I could bring, to bring like more leather here and bring the price down, then that's typically more difficult because usually the price is already lower. So that's why we're producing it here. But yeah, maybe I'm wrong, guys. I don't know. But we can go in and, and buy it all. That would make sense anyway. That would be based on the supply and demand of the town. So yeah, we can go in and purchase all of the leather here. I didn't think there was very much. Yeah, there's only three here, but it is cheaper. Slightly, anyways. Since it's produced here, but they don't really have much. So yeah, we can go and buy the leather and then uh, go sell that somewhere else. Uh, so I don't remember what we paid for it. Was it 170 something 180 something Something like that. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take it, and you can see we're, we're broke now, guys. <laughs> yeah, like 2,000-something dinars. Got no money. Yeah, not much money Can't spent at all. Can't be robbed, though. Uh, but you'll see, uh, we can hover over here to look at it. Uh, that's just our mercenary contract. We, we probably haven't started getting paid yet. You can also see it through here, you know, your finances. And so I don't think it's updated yet that we have it. And so, yeah, when we go over and look at the tannery, it does say it's making zero income at the moment. So you just got to wait a little bit. Uh, now, another way to change it is right through here. You can manage the workshop and change it to any of these. Now, I want to say somebody told me in the comments that the most profitable is the wool weavery. I haven't tried that one yet. I think everywhere I'm doing it is olive presses and wine presses. And they can make a nice profit. If you build them in the right place, I'm going to make a pretty good profit and, and not just from the, the monthly profit, but also, uh, you know, buying the, the goods cheap and going and selling them elsewhere too has been quite profitable as well. Is there anything that can affect like your ownership of a workshop? Like if a place gets taken or like if a city falls to another faction or something, do they take that from you? I've never lost anything yet. I was just assuming that that would that would happen, that mm -hmm. the owners would, something would happen with the owners. So I built mine all on locations that I wasn't too worried about being taken. Mm. Uh, so, for instance, you know, the first couple ones that I built, you know, I'm, I'm with the Vlandian. So I built them kind of far away. Like one of them is here in the their capital, which is right here. So it's kind of far away from the border. And then another one that's, I think, over here. And so both of them are far from the border in case they did you know, start losing territory. And then I built two in my main city, which is this one here, which is pretty far from the border with them. Uh, so I actually haven't had it taken, but what I can say is that uh, when you loot towns, when you take a town, you'll get the option, when you're the commander of that that army that took the town, you get the option of like how much you want to loot it, uh, you know, like how badly you want to loot it. Mm -hmm. And that affects a variety of things. Like if you don't loot it too much, it actually... Uh, irritates the people that are with you, uh, the people in your army with you, because they want the loot. They want it all. So yeah, the name people will actually lose opinion with you. They'll be unhappy. You lose morale as well, because everybody's unhappy that you didn't loot the you didn't loot the town. 
uh, then in addition to that, it affects the opinion of all those people who live in the town uh, who own stuff. So the production people, they get irritated at you because you looted their stuff. Mm. And it also decreases the prosperity. And I think the prosperity does affect how much you make. And so like building in this town with 2268 prosperity, using a production building there is probably not the best place to do it. It's probably better to do somewhere like here. Uh, you probably make more money from it anyways because it has a higher prosperity. So when you do those looting, that affects the prosperity too. So most certainly they can affect, you know, your your value, uh, the value of, of your buildings. I don't know if they can actually take it from you. I can't say. I've just been assuming that they would. Yeah. Just to be safe. But I haven't actually seen that before. Because you can't be too careful with your money and your investments yeah. in this game. <laughs> so you can see our workshop's now making plus 45, which is very, very low income for a workshop. So I'm hoping that steps up some. Despite not really making us much, it's making us just enough that we're now on the positive. So we're actually, you know, when you combine that with our mercenary contract, we're actually making enough uh, to pay all our wages and stuff. Uh, so yeah, there is that. It's a nice little form of daily income. And that's really what it comes down to, I noticed. Uh, when I, I first built up an army, I had a huge uh, amount of money, a large amount of money. So I built up a big old army and started doing the battles, joined a faction. I talked about that before. I was helping the Southern Empire out. And then, yeah, I found myself going, like, deep, deep in debt. Eventually, I just couldn't keep paying for it uh, because I didn't have the daily income. And so it required me to, like, constantly be fighting uh, in order to get that money, you know, to, to be... Uh, getting people's loot and selling it and, and, and taking cities and making profits that way, making profits from battle. Uh, so, yeah, I just found myself, like, just not able. So this is the king of the Sturgeons. I don't think Ooh. we've met him before. So this is our king that we're serving Grand right now. Prince. Rogan Pond. He's, he's dead in my playthrough. Oh. So the king has been killed. Uh, they're not doing well, the Sturgeons. I don't know who the current king is, but he's dead. Because he used to be my friend, and he was killed. Because uh, I was thinking about joining them. But then they started losing territory very rapidly. While I was, when I was in my trading days, my merchant <laughs> days, just kind of traveling, being a traveling merchant. Just chilling and making money. And so here's his story. Let's let you guys read that. And so I think we just did four or five people now. Yeah, I think that's the fourth. So yeah, still a lot of people to talk to. But essentially, once you've done all that and you've learned enough about it, and I may be skipping some stuff that happens here, but eventually you'll need to talk to these two different people about where to get the banners from, the rest of the banner, because I think we have the first of three pieces. So that'll show us that. Uh, actually, in our inventory. So we go to our inventory here. You see it says Dragon Banner First Piece. So there's three pieces to the dragon banner. And essentially, I'm just going to put that, mark that real quick. I'm not sure we're wanting to sell this, by the way. I'm not sure where it'll be worth anything. Uh, but I guess we can continue trading. We don't really have anything else to do because we're not at war here with anybody. I can take a look and see if anything started while I wasn't paying attention. Anything we missed. Yeah, they're not war with anybody, even the minor powers. Yeah, you can see that uh, there's the two different clans with the bears. We could have seen that in here, but uh, what's important is that our bear is bigger. So <laughs> that's what matters here, guys. Bear. It's a big bear. Yeah, so this is them. He's even bald like us. Wow. Wow. Stealing my identity, here. damn it. He has a nice family. My wife is pregnant in our playthrough. You guys will see that. She might have already had the baby by the time we start. I don't know if I'll keep if I'll be able to play again before we, we start that series of because that'll be a little bit later this week, so we'll see. But yeah, right now she's currently pregnant. Uh, the way to do that, by the way, the, the way I found to be the best, and I watched videos about this, and that's what everybody told me as well, is that you need to go to a city where your spouse is. So either she's in your party and you go together, or in my case, she's the governor of that city because she governs my main city, uh, which is, again, this one right here. Quayez or Quayez or something like that. Quayez, yeah, something like that. I don't know how to pronounce the city. I just own it. But uh, yeah, I guess you get to decide. Yeah, huh? it's my city. I'll, I'll determine the pronunciation. 
But yeah, she manages my my main city, so she's the governor there, so therefore you just need to be in the same city as her. Uh, some people were thinking that you needed to be have her in your party, but you actually do not. And so yeah, you just need to be in the same city as your spouse. Hang out for a bit. Yeah, and then you just hang out. Um, what, what you should do is save before you do it, so that after like 10, 15 days or so, if you still haven't had a baby yet... Uh, which, by the way, guys, you know, I've never seen me do this before, but you can move these troops around here. Oh. Yeah, you can just click on the troops and move them anywhere. I don't do this because it's we have such a small army, so it's irrelevant. Yeah. It's not really until I start getting into the really large armies that I feel the need to, to move them around. But yeah, you can move them around. You, know, you can change up their formation, all that kind of good stuff. It's all stuff I haven't really... I personally haven't really messed with in this playthrough because it just doesn't feel necessary. Since we're just not, uh, we're just not strong enough. Yeah, I didn't know that. I figured there was a way, but... Yeah, you can move them around and stuff. While in there. Oh, these are the forest ones, so... Oh, they're all bows. Yeah, they're all bowmen, unfortunately. So they're probably going to do some damage to us. Achoo. We did not do much damage there. He's very armored. So we should probably oh, actually have everybody engage. I think we've actually... We might have already even lost them. I'm not entirely right. sure. And this person can charge. Attack! Well, you've got them nice and distracted. Yeah, they're all shooting at me. We're going to have that person charge there. Oh, and I missed. So they're not doing tons of damage to us because we do have that increased armor on, guys. Build one of those bushwhackers. Just kind of help out. Hopefully, not lose anybody. And we missed. I think they're almost dead. Last I think it's guy. that last guy. Yeah. Somebody will get him. Everybody Shell the lucky off got him. All right. So won the battle, and hopefully we didn't lose anybody. I thought we'd lost a horse guy. But... Nope, we did not. All right. Excellent. So we got through that without losing anything. Got ourselves some more influence, which you know, as a mercenary, that's useful. And uh, these prisoners, we're going to go ahead and take them, even though they're, they're not worth much, because we're right next to a city, so... And, and they're worth more than the looters are. And also, we got to upgrade some of our characters here. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, we'll get more warriors. Uh, in this case, I think we're going to get the skirmisher. I notice we haven't, we don't have a lot of bowmen, so let's get a few bowmen here. And it looks like we're lacking a horse there as well, to be able to upgrade that character there. All right, so let's go ahead and pay the gold, get them upgraded. And uh, we actually have some decent armor here. These were forest bandits, so they're more likely to have better stuff. Uh, so we'll just take a look and see if this is better than what any of our current peoples are wearing. Yeah, that one's definitely better, so we're going to put that in. And plus, it's fine old fur armor. It fits for Shell the Lucky, yeah. I feel. He's a barbarian. Uh, a fur cloak, but I think we might want to wear that. We don't even have a very good thing. We just got a tailored scarf here. <laughs> and so I think we're going to wear this. You can see it's it's better body armor and uh, better arm armor. And it's just more fitting. It looks cooler. Yeah, it looks like a bear. Yeah, I like it. All right, so yeah, we'll rock that. And I suppose we can give this to our brother if he's not already wearing a tailored scarf. He's just got a regular scarf. So put that on him. I mean, yeah, we'll just see if we got anything that's worse than than this here probably not scarf's pretty bad it looks like that sword isn't isn't better than anything we got here yeah that's about it guys but we get we need to get some cheese i like cheese yeah we'll take that cheese i thought i marked the leather I, I, apparently i didn't save that though we're gonna mark the cheese as well though we'll probably let our people eat that <laughs> No, we're not. <laughs> It'll be eaten. Like this, we're gonna have any choice in the matter. We can eat it for ourselves. Yeah, I'm gonna eat it. It's my cheese. If this guy doesn't go, okay. If he goes this way, continues to go that way, we'll chase him down. They'll be able to catch him though. Well, maybe not because he. uh... Well, now we're going the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to go that far. But maybe we could chase this guy well, down. They were feeling confident there for a minute. Okay, we do not want to go that far out of the way, guys. We're trying to go to the city here. So yeah, we'll just do some trading for the rest of the episode here. Now, if any wars start up, then obviously we will assist with that. But again, there's there's a, a bit of a grind here. 
I want to say our best course of action would be to join a different faction. You know, we're going to keep these arrows just in case we need another thing of arrows. Uh, so I was going to sell all that junk there. We did make a little bit of money here. And it looks like our leather's worth maybe a little bit more than we paid. I don't know. I don't think so. I think we paid some 170 something, 180 something. So I don't think that's a profit at all, guys. So definitely want to take the, the leather somewhere else. Uh, we could also buy more horses when we find somewhere that's got cheap horses. Jeez, those are expensive. Yeah, those horses are pretty expensive, so we don't want to sell it to them. There's a hideout here. I can go fight in the hideout. How not, I suppose, but yeah. I mean, sometimes you get some pretty good loot there. But we're still looking for somebody to buy our leather, man. Uh, I guess we could buy stuff here. So we're not just trying to trade, you know, just the leather. Mm-hmm. Because what I'd really like to do, I mean, eventually we'll see this in uh, the next series. I'd really like to show you guys how it works with the color and on the trade. But I think we're kind of far off from that. I think our trade's like level 16 or 18 or something like that. So we're pretty pretty far off from getting the, the first one, which is 25, I believe. All this stuff is super expensive here. They got oh. beer, though. We could buy that beer. As long as it's under 40, that's pretty decent. How much beer do we got? Let's do 15 there. The wool? Mm. Did I pass that or no, is that down here? Further down. Yeah, it's mm. not considered cheap. Clay? No, that's kind of expensive for clay. Uh, iron ore, that's not a bad price for iron ore. Yeah, you can make maybe double, depending, of course, on where you sell it. So what we'll do is just buy get. it from that Jacqulin. Was it cheaper there? Oh yeah, it's super cheap over there, isn't it? Just looking for other things that might be cheap here. They also have cheap leather. Uh, it's around the price what we paid, so if we wanted to just step up our leather just a little bit. All right, that looks good. And do we have enough food? Yeah, we got enough food. All right, so yeah, just looking for somewhere to sell our leather. Again, I'm not entirely sure where leather is good price. Uh, you really just kind of base it off of, you know, the trade goods you can see on the map. And if they don't have any, uh, any hides, there's a good chance they don't have leather production. So maybe it's cheaper. So we can head over here. But yeah, I'm not entirely sure where the leather is. Is a good price. Why are we not moving? I clicked over here. I probably clicked somewhere <laughs> you couldn't go. So you can't go that way. So it looks like we're actually making money now. A good chunk of money now because of the uh, the merchant contract. Also, the workshop income has stepped up as well. Nice. I, I thought it would. It just takes a little while. So we're not making 107, which still isn't great for a workshop. But, uh, I mean, it's it's okay. Better than nothing. It's better than nothing. It's money we weren't getting before. And there we go. Uh, war. Uh, with the Southern Empire of all places. Wow, we're not even... I don't even think we're bordering the Southern Empire, are we? We're like way over there. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, not really. Oh, well, I guess they have a castle right here. Oh, oh they, okay. They kinda do. Yeah, they've had some success. So the Southern Empire, who completely and utterly failed in my campaign, is doing pretty good in this one. Yeah, they're not doing bad, so what you might want to do is go up around this way and attack them here, or you can go th through this way as well. Either way, it's going to be a long, hard ride. So let's just go ahead and go up here for now, since we're already halfway there. But yeah, if we can get over there, we will. Let's see here if there's anything else to be aware of. Nope, oh, just the war. Alright, so we're going to run over here and see if they'll buy our hide for cheap. Probably not. And we'll look to see if we can't uh, join an army here. We'll have to buy it for more. Yeah, I meant to... I said for cheap, didn't I? <laughs> Obviously, I don't want to bot for cheap. Oh, that's a much better price. Two eight's not bad. Um, Could probably get more somewhere. But. Yeah, I mean it's only five though. I mean we made a profit on most of them except for like the last two. I don't think we made a profit there. But the point is, is that we kind of need to sell our crap if we want to be able to. Uh, yeah, I just feel like you can get a lot more for iron than that. I mean it's still more than we paid, but not yeah. much more. I might, might just keep this then. And we still got all that flax to sell, too. 
I mean, it's a little bit of profit here. Uh, but he's got flax. We don't want to buy too much more in the trade goods since we're about to go to war, guys. So that's something to consider. But there's a lot of stops along the way. So that's why I'm thinking it could be wise for us to just buy a little something, something, something that's cheap. Uh, so far, you can see none of the places we went to buying cheese for that much more, but it's almost double already, so... Clay is cheap. Yeah, this is one of the places clay is really cheap, so that's what you get for clay when it's cheap, seven. So you could actually double your profit if you just get some clay here. You're not going to make a ton of money, but... You know, you're still doubling it. So we got 25 clay there, and it was not that expensive, 185. Not bad at all. See if they got anything else really cheap here. I think it's just that butter up there. Yeah, the leather wasn't a good price here either. Uh, how much grain do we currently have? We could use more grain for the war. And if we find cheap uh, fish anywhere, we probably want to get that as well. Uh, so the cheese and the butter. I guess we'll do butter. And then, yeah, we'll keep on doing the butter until it gets up to 19, I suppose. Or we run out of, well, that's it. That's all <laughs> the space we got. All right, so we'll take this down and sell it up along the way. Uh, we could just join the army and follow them all the way there, but then we're kind of going at their pace. Got and all these goods. They're pretty far away. Uh, so we'll just see, like, where's he going? All right, he's still gathering up, so it's going to take him time to get all gathered. So we've got plenty of time to do some trading and stuff. Go to that epic Rotea. I mean, that's kind of the opposite. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on where he attacks. I was thinking we'd be heading up along here, though. Up along the coast, so you'd want to hit, like, these two cities up. I'm not sure what they have that are cheap and uh, what's, you know, got some value. And I guess it's not that far out of the way, but it's kind of out of the way. Yeah, I think we should stick along the coast until we know where that army's going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll just stick up along the coast. Because, yeah, I think that would have to take us... Well, I guess you could go through here. Yeah, I suppose it's not that bad. Sure, why not? Although I can't recall if we actually made any good profits. Oh, I said Epic Rotea. That one is on the coast. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. this name's something else? Is that purple one down there? There's Epic Rotea and Regular. Oh, Crotea. Okay, I see. Oh, I guess this is... I see. Okay, they have very similar names. See, I thought you were talking about that place. No. Okay, so we were just talking about two different places. <laughs> I guess we can run this guy down real quick. Uh, these looters... Yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and do the fight real quick because it doesn't take us that long to, to do the attack. I was just going to send the troops in. We only have 20 dudes. We should really hire some more, honestly. Yeah, especially since we're at war. Yeah. I was just trying not to spend too much, and we really don't have much money right now. Yeah, the money leaves a lot to be desired. But yeah, these guys don't have bows, at least. So they're just going to be chucking those rocks at us. Somebody's got a horse. They got a pony? Where'd that happen? He's throwing rocks. And I missed him. I don't think I've seen the looters with a <laughs> pony before. Well, let's He's bring the, highway, the pony over here so that he'll get shot at and stuff. Uh, Shoot, maybe. Uh... Maybe I'll have to kill his horse. Oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> That's embarrassing. So that saved his life. I probably went and hit him anyways. So I'm hoping they're shooting at him. Oh, he keeps hitting him. Oh, I missed him. <laughs> Everybody's So he there. actually... He's over here oh causing God. all kinds of mayhem. Yeah, he actually killed somebody. Well, because they're not really engaging him. Uh, so what we need to do is have... Soldiers, these archers engage. Oh, and now these guys are over here because I spent so long uh, <laughs> chasing after the horse, dude. They finally caught up. Yeah, they have caught up. Right, so we killed one, or I think we just did a little damage to him, actually. But you know, the point here was really to get our troops trained up, so we did that. We did lose a dude, but maybe he just got injured. Where'd the pony guy go? I think the pony guy is still alive, too. So he, 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 he was quite effective, even though he was running in the trees and stuff. He kept me distracted. And then he blocked that hit. This guy's a freaking hero. <laughs> so let's get these guys uh, engaged in here. 
Another horse dude might be able to help me catch him. I guess we had a couple people on horses, because our brother's on a horse as well. Get him, Fabio. <laughs> Somebody get him. Jesus, man. <laughs> this guy's just like... He's a menace. You can do that, though. Like, sometimes, man, I had this one big old battle that we lost. And so it was like hundreds and hundreds of dudes. Maybe as much as like a thousand dudes still remaining at the end of the battle. Uh, and it was just me alive. And they were like struggling to kill me. <laughs> there you go. God damn. But yeah, they were struggling to, to kill my guy. Even though they had this huge army and I was just riding through. Alright, so we are actually running around with prisoners because I forgot we had them. Oh no. Yeah, that's silly. I meant to sell these. Since those prisoners do slow us down here. Um, so I think we did lose that one guy, didn't we? We lost a couple guys, or at least they need to be... Yeah, we lost a couple dudes. Alright. That's unfortunate. Oh, and it looks like there's one more upgrade here, too. We got uh, a bunch of Sturgeon soldiers that we upgraded. Right, excellent. So I think we might need a... I, th I believe we have mounts. I think we just need... We need a war mount for that one guy who can't... We can't seem to upgrade him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need a war mount there. I'm not sure if that's better than what this guy is wearing. We'll take a look real quick. Looks like it is. Outside of the arm armor. But yeah, everything else is much better, so we'll have him wear that. And I think that's it. And that episode sure did go quick. Yeah, it did. So, yeah, it feels like we didn't really get much done here. We can run over here and sell this stuff, but yeah, this basically will be the end of the episode. And that's the end of this series, since we'll be starting that new one. That will be in episode one, with a completely different... Did we already make peace? Wow, that was a quick war. <laughs> they just wanted... Or I guess thing. that worked out. I thought we were going to war and stuff, and not that we would have had much time in, in the series anyway with just this episode, but yeah, I thought we'd be able to at least get over there. But yeah, they ended that, that super quick. But yeah, that will be a, a new episode, so I'll have a new thumbnail with an episode one and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, let's go and switch over to trade goods and make sure these are marked real quick. And then what we'll do is sell all that crap we have on us. Get rid of all that because I don't think there's anything good here. So get rid of all that first. And then apparently you can't carry much. Probably from the dudes we lost. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's from the dudes we lost. You can't carry as much. Uh, so you'd have to sell some of this crap anyway. Uh, but clay we bought for a very good price. So yeah, we can double our money there. Yeah, you probably don't want to sell it for 12 when you bought it for 7 But we're going to go ahead and just get rid of it all here, guys. Uh, flax. This is a decent price for flax. You can see there's other places to get it cheaper. But I think we bought this pretty cheap. Or hopefully bought it pretty cheap. Because I'm selling it for the, <laughs> the average kind of mid-range price there. Iron, we've already seen that that's a uh, better price other places. Uh, butter, obviously that's not a good price for butter or beer. Yeah, they got our trade scope to 17, so we were just sitting at 16. Our trade was Get not rid of your prisoners. very high. Oh, yeah. Getting rid of our prisoners, we could probably get a lot of money. I don't think there's any that we want to keep either, so yeah, we just ransom them all off. Not as much as I thought, but yeah. Doing that gets us uh, some roguery points as well. So this will be the end of the episode and the end of the series. I've had a lot of fun with it, really enjoying the game. I think they did a really good job with it, uh, improving it from the, the previous game. Uh, so it adds some new mechanics, not a ton, not as much as I was kind of expecting so far from what I've seen. But yeah, it has some new mechanics. Overall, everything seems to work better it than it did in Warman. And yeah, that seems to be the most important uh, improvement is that it looks significantly better, uh, both on this map here uh, where you see some of the biggest changes and uh you know visual improvements and then of course in the the actual you know combat map uh looks quite a bit better as well uh everything works better too like in sieges and stuff just works better than it did in warband uh everything's a little bit clearer even though the game still doesn't tell you much or explain how to play all that much it's still clear how to do things than it was in warband in my opinion it's a little bit easier to to figure things out so overall, it's, a, it's, it's an improved game. Uh, it's better than the last one, and that's like the bare minimum you want from you know a, uh, a sequel is to be better than the last game and improve on what the, the last game did. Uh, so I've been enjoying it quite a bit, and so that's why I will be continuing playing it here on the channel, doing that other series. 
I don't know exactly what day that will start just yet because uh, we're wrapping up some other series and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that will be starting. We'll be uh, hopping on to my other campaign. And uh, we're a little bit further in the game. So you guys can see what that gameplay is like with a, a character who's significantly better stat-wise, uh, better gear as well, uh, and just kind of further along on the story. And rich. Rich. Yeah, I have like 500-something thousand or 600,000 dinars right now. I think I'm the richest clan in the world because uh, if you look at the clans, it tells you like how rich they are. And I haven't seen any other clans that say very rich. They all just say rich. Mine says very rich. I have a lot of dinars. Uh, also, I'm the most powerful in our kingdom. Uh, you know, I have, I think, five current uh, locations that are, you know, castles and cities. I think it's uh, what is this? three cities and two castles over here. I'm the most powerful of the Vlandians, and I think the Vlandians right now are also the most powerful of the kingdoms as well. Uh, so the most powerful vassal in the most powerful kingdom, but I still am just a vassal. So there's a lot of other things to do, guys. Like you could rebel against your king and take all your territory, and then you'll be at war with the king and, you know, declare yourself a separate kingdom. And that's something we'll talk about when it comes to the dragon banner, uh, which I was kind of briefly explaining here, uh, you know, the way that, that works, since you guys won't be able to see all that uh, in that other series, because I've already gotten them all. Essentially, you go talk to these two different people. One of them wants you to rebuild the empire. The other one wants you to destroy the empire for good by creating another kingdom that can challenge that empire. You know, the, the three uh, different you know, branches of the empire that are, are there right now, uh, the southern, western, and northern. And so you have to kind of side with one of them. Initially, you need to talk to both of them because they'll tell you where a dragon banner is. And then it'll let you get the other two pieces, uh, which is just like going into one of those hideouts, I, I believe. If I, yeah, I believe it's just like a hideout and you fight them and then get the banner. Uh, but once you have all the banners, then you take it to one of them, and then they'll form it into one banner. And then, essentially, it's who do you want to give the dragon banner to? Uh, and that's where I'm at right now, guys. I haven't given it to anybody. So you can either keep it for yourself and declare your own kingdom. And, like, that, you're either forming the kingdom to destroy the empire, or you're forming a new kind of faction in the imperial civil war to kind of take over the empire yourself, become the new emperor. Uh, so you can do it that way as well. And in order to do those, you have to either have an imperial city or a non-imperial city. Of course, that's respect of which direction you're wanting to go, and that's based on the culture. And so when you look over them, hover over them, they'll tell you the culture. So if you want to go the empire route, you have to have the empire culture. And if you don't, then you got to be in a location that you know doesn't have the empire culture, You know any other one of these cultures here. Uh, so then you can keep the banner yourself, and I'm not entirely sure exactly what happens there, but but you can do that. And again, you got to be independent, so I haven't been able to do that yet. I'd have to declare independence over here to do that. Or you can give it to one of the other leaders. Uh, so in my case, I could give it to my king. Uh, you give it to any of the other kingdoms or the emperors. Uh, that's an option as well. And then that leader kind of becomes the new... That's what I'm guessing it is, is like you kind of have like the most legitimacy now because you have this dragon banner. That's all something you discover when you talk to all those people. Uh, when you're doing the 10, you know, talk to the 10 nobles, uh, they kind of tell you the, the storyline there. Uh, so yeah, I haven't really figured out much in regards to what it does. I suppose I could always Google it, but I didn't want to spoil it for myself. I was, I was curious uh, though what it, what it does. And so I kind of want to declare independence. I don't really want to betray my king, but at the same time, I think it'd be interesting to keep the banner for myself and declare independence. So we'll see, guys. I will play around in that campaign and then see exactly what, what we want to do with it. Uh, but it should be fun, you know, kind of moving further in time and, and eliminating some of the grind. I've already already done that, guys. So you can see what it's like once you're in the kind of mid game. Uh, I'd say that's probably about mid game at this point. Uh, so, yeah, you guys can see what the, the mid game uh, gameplay looks like. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to, to jump into that again. We'll be starting that here in a few days at least. Let's wrap up some of these other series. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode and this series overall. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Uh, if you're looking for anything to watch while you wait for the next series to start up, then check out the front page of our channel. We have like 3,000 something videos all sorted by genre, so you should be able to find something to watch. Uh, if you're looking for any links, check out the description of any of our videos. You'll find links to our PayPal, Patreon, and Teespring store if you'd like to help support the channel. you also find links to our Discord if you'd like to join our community. And finally, you'll find links to all of our social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff if you'd like to follow us on there. 
Uh, so I do hope to see you guys on that next episode when it starts up. Should be fun and, and uh, very different from this one where really it was just me kind of learning the game. And then after I'd kind of learned it, being stuck with a character that was significantly uh, lower in quality on skills and, uh, and equipment and, and everything else. And money funds particularly. Our funds are in a bad place here. Uh, but you can see how we, we're already improving it though. Uh, we're now actually making money uh, every day. So you can see that we're, we're getting there, but there would be a lot of grinding, so that's the reason why we're, we're just eliminating that, and uh, yeah, we'll hop on to that next series. So I do hope to see you guys on that one, and uh, thanks for watching.